Now, what did you do to your ex-husband that led to that relationship ending? I probably withdrew love from him, but he hurts me. And you hurt him? Yeah, I guess I do. I recently had a short video go viral. Let's watch. Your father taught you that his, you're his little princess, didn't he? Yes, he taught you you're perfect, didn't he? He really, he really f***ed you up, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Yes. Love he you taught too. you to expect the man in your life to be the same as him. But see, there's only one problem. He didn't have to put up with your because you valued and admired him. Mm. You're good, right? You're so good. 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 Wow. Yes. And he didn't have sex with you, so there wasn't the peace of you feeling a sense of control over him. It wasn't something you could give or withhold from him. It would not affect his sense of love with you. So you had no power, so you worked to please him. It made you believe that love is something that should be expected, and you could take it away because it was always there from him. And you've taken it away from this man. I'm not defending anything this man has done. I don't know what he's done. I bet he's done some stupid things that he probably hates himself for. But so have you. Mm. And if I was coaching, I would probably tell him to move on. Because this girl acts sweet, is sweet, and will take away love in a heartbeat if she doesn't get what she wants. Mm. Because she's lived a life where she could. If her father had not taught her she's a princess, she would learn that she would have to find a way to meet the needs of others, not just herself and her children. And she would never take love away because she wouldn't take the risk. Mm. As a result of that, their relationship could be more deep. Because it all changed when children came, and it wasn't the children. It's that she decided the love of the children was her priority, and she pulled back love from him without meaning to initially. But then when he didn't do things she wanted the way she wanted, she got mad, and then she did do it deliberately. And he didn't understand that at first, and then he felt hurt, and then that turned into anger, and then he did stupid things because he's used to being able to make things happen. Hmm. Wow. Man's just explained an entire generation of marital issues, like he's got a camera in all of our houses. We require boys to be good men, but we don't require girls to be good women. And that lack of requirement is due to the protection of their feelings. Without balance, an overprotective father may be as detrimental as a father that was never there. For your little princess may develop into an over-entitled, spoiled brat that wreaks havoc. Now the majority of y'all will know who is leading that discussion, and for those that do not, he goes by the name of Tony Robbins. Now, Tony Robbins was a guru, mostly on live stages or in huge conference rooms for the better part of 40 years or so. So he was giving self-help and motivation advice far before an internet guru or even the internet ever existed. But what I didn't know and what was highlighted in the previous clip is how often he would speak directly either to men or to men through women within talking points that push accountability, responsibility, and standards. Instead of the current modern dogma that feeds into a victimhood mindset pushing weakness as well as excuses. So what we're going to do here today is break down additional clips that I found of Tony Robbins, not only how he's talking to men, but how he challenges women to understand the reality that modern men face through his words, forcing them to have empathy. And there's going to be a lot of things to learn here as a man that won't fall into the feel-good fluff that you'll often see across social media, but real actionable things that'll get you results without further ado. Does complaining make your relationship better? Has it ever made your relationship better? Mm, no. Has it ever made you truly happy? No, no, not no. at all. So then why do you continue to do something that everything up and adds no value and you can see by everyone in this room that it's not just your husband that it is the worst thing you could do to a masculine male? You have a miracle beside you. 
You have a man that has taken your for years and who wants to be more for you and has gone on a nine month, eight month, seven month journey of working his ass off because he's done everything that almost everyone wants a man to do. He's expressed his true feelings. He's been vulnerable. He's worked hard to improve himself. He's loved you through it all and he's not made you wrong. Maybe that's the problem. Oh. I know you're a good soul, but you've been rewarded so much for so long because you're an attractive woman that you have never had consequences for how you behave. The reason I keep laughing within that clip is because if you watch her eyes throughout the clip, it looks as if she's desperately trying to find somebody else to blame. <laughs> That's her next response. But what Tony is bringing up here is the exact reason that simping, right, or putting her on a pedestal for little to no reason other than that she is a woman <laughs> just for existing will not only never benefit you, but it'll make her resent you way more. For your simping is actually creating a negative feedback loop where she is being rewarded for lackluster, if not bad behavior. Now, what I'm not saying to do is to never spoil your lady, all right? You only got one life to live. So you should be as happy as what you can within that life. But there has to be balance. You cannot coddle her like a child. And you need to hold her accountable if she crosses the line or doesn't try hard enough. Men get so used to tolerating the BS because that's what society teaches us to do. To be forever tolerant. But your tolerance will never earn respect. And in fact, your respect will erode slowly over years of unchecked disrespect because you allowed the behavior to persist and you didn't have a spine to speak up. Now in this situation, she probably yelled at him on the way home, right? <laughs> it's probably way too gone. But that's what happens if you lose respect over long periods of time. So although Tony is correct here, what he also doesn't realize is that Tony just ruined this guy's like next weeks to months of his life because she's going to make him pay for the accountability that he was unable to get for himself. Quick emergency meeting. I was recently searching for my name online and found way too much personal information, which brought me down this weird rabbit hole of how that could have happened and found out that there's companies out there called data brokers that will sell your data to marketers, scammers, and even stalkers. And it's a nasty, disgusting feeling knowing that there's bad actors out there selling my information, selling your information, for profit. But that's why I'm recommending today's sponsor, Aura. Now I use Aura to automatically remove my information from these sites and keep my information off. But they do other things as well, such as bank fraud and identity theft alerts, VPN access. But guys, utilize my link down in the description box down below for a 14 day trial at least see if you've been compromised. Privacy is king in this day and age, and you should know if your information is out there. So again, utilize my link, aura.com slash MTR, in the description box down below to try two weeks free. That's way more than enough time to see if your personal data has been exposed. Go now. Now, in the next clip that I have for you guys here, Tony Robbins really demonstrates that he understands and can articulate the male perspective. Now, what did you do to your ex-husband that led to that relationship ending? I probably withdrew love from him. But he hurts me. And you hurt him. Yeah, I guess I do. He doesn't seem like he cares, though. It doesn't even seem like it affects him. Of course he doesn't. Same strategy you use. He's just better at it. Because he's a man. He has no one to talk to about it, so he won't. He doesn't talk about anything. He's a man. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Right. Now, okay. What? I find two things very interesting about this conversation. The first one is, is that while women in mass will say that they want men to communicate about their feelings, what you often find is that through that relationship, you have taught that man not to talk about his feelings because you'll use it against him. The second is, is that the female paradigm of feeling sharing is a female paradigm. It is not an expectation that should be held over the heads of men. And you have to be able to acknowledge the biological differences between us in the way that we communicate. For example, masculine men do not do this, all right? Her first defense mechanism within the conversation with Tony was to claim victim. But Tony intelligently got her to admit that both of them 
are at fault, which is probably more accurate telling, retelling of their relationship story, which is markedly different than how she started off with Tony or even how she communicates with her friends or her family in regards to her man. If you more often than not have people around you that only validate your feelings as opposed to challenging your reality, then you will never grow. You will never be held accountable and you will always point the finger. And then you're going to wake up and realize that it was you who helped killed the relationships in your life. You think the purpose of relationship is pleasure. But then at some stage, most people exit when it's not pleasurable enough. They run and they think they're going to find some other place where it's just pleasure. But they don't realize the loss of pleasure is not just changing chemistry. It's because you've not grown. In the beginning, you're attracted to someone because there's similarities, but there's certain differences, something that you like about them. But if you stay in relationship and you don't grow, those parts that she respects or likes in him that she thinks are not in her are in her. She's just disidentified with them because she was not rewarded for that in her youth. He has parts she has that he disidentified from in his youth because it wasn't rewarded by his father. So you get attracted to each other, but then if you don't actually grow yourself into those qualities, you start to resent the person you still love, whereas it was the very thing you liked before. It's not because they changed, it's because you didn't grow. And so unconsciously, rather than blame yourself, you blame them. That is the purpose of relationship, is to grow spiritually. And with that comes an enormous amount of incredible love and your own growth as i'm over here venting these chicks you guys want to know one of the questions that i ensure i ask a lot of questions in and around her idea towards continuous learning and continuous improvement when considering someone for long term like if you serious right like if you at that stage in your life and you're just like ah, i'm just tired of ripping and running you know friday night saturday nights you know what i'm saying you need something a little bit more stable i'm trying to tell you guys if you do not ask questions about continuous learning and a lot of this can be inferred from actions, right? What type of shows are they watching? Do they stay more in that love and hip hop bullshit? Or are they watching things that help improve the way that they think about things or that they can understand how the world works or the reality around them? Which type of things is she consuming? Does she get excited when she thinks about learning something new that can translate into a net positive or a net benefit for you. Put on some how to do a massage clip up on YouTube and see how she reacts, all right? As you take a look at that information is, ew, I would never do something like that. Or does she say, hmm, this can be something that I can utilize towards his peace and his happiness. And it's not just a one-way street, it's two-way. I think both need to be continuous learners. But if you don't lead her within that direction or you do not have that expectations or if by default she is not a nurturer, if you do not prioritize these things and instead you are prioritizing the symmetry within her face or the way that them legs and hamstrings connect to that gluteus maximus, and I'm telling you guys, you setting yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> for heartache and agony, baby. You cannot stop growing just because you get the person that you want, all right? Except for if that growing is your waistline, all right? You can absolutely stop your waistline <laughs> from growing. But that's another point aside. Within life, it is a constant development. Shit, I did content about a week or so ago about reinventing yourself. And just like Tony alluded to, throughout that growth or that reinvention, people can start to boop, 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 boop reinvent a part. Women's expectations of men promoted through either societal coddling or just being okay that they sit in this air of delusion of who they are or what they look like or how much money that they make. These expectations are outpacing the cost to men in the long term. For the men that are currently going through it, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. So if a man goes in there weak, subservient to the demands of her ridiculous expectations, and if he does not hold true within the structure that he leads her through, then you may be setting up this more one-sided pleasure ride. And if you ride within that over time, it's going to breed resentment. But all right, guys, I'm out of here for right now. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment box down below, whether or not you agree with the points that I made within this, disagree. I want to hear from the ladies as well. I'm sure there's a lot of y'all out there that do not wholly agree with the things that I'm saying, but please put it down in the comment box. Maybe we'll do a live stream as well. Bring some of y'all up and we'll have some spirited debate and conversation. I think that there is not only a non-empathy epidemic when it comes to understanding men, but I do think that there was a simping epidemic <laughs> when it comes to men as well. Too many of these men have been introduced to information that has, you know, corroded what it means to be a man. And a lot of these dudes lead with more of a female paradigm. And I think that it's weird. Masculine men need to take back the definition of manhood. 
The job of leading with structure and principle should be a non-negotiable. Regulate your emotions, hold frame, set your standards, and have the backbone early to hold accountable because then that will drive respect. Shout out again to Tony Robbins for all of these clips. I got to find more clips of him. I didn't know that he'd be popping off in a live studio audience like this, but now you know. All right, let me know again what you think down in the comment box down below. I appreciate you guys again for stopping in, and I'll see you soon. Until next time, peace. So what's out further ado? MTR, cut the new beats like we in charge. No cap with the rappers like steel balls. I'm packing and rapping like here we are, here we are. Mediocre tutorial reviews. Like, comment, share my views. Come up and I pay my dues. Big step in my black way shoes. MTR, he break it down, yeah, it's MTR. Check out the sound when it's MTR. No one put it down like it's MTR.